Okay, good morning, everyone. Got some early birds. Hi, Chris, Joe, Pam, Peter. Oh, Patsy. Patsy's back. Great. Lots of people coming through the doors already. Morning, guys. Welcome to another social hub session. Here we've got another, another healthy... Uh, number of registrants uh, this week. We've got 60 people register and I'm sure we'll get close to that um, who will attend as well. But yeah, good morning everybody that's just come in. Good to see some familiar names and some unfamiliar names as well, as always. Morning, Edward. Great. Yeah, so I, I had a week off um, in our last session, thanks to the two Stuarts for covering. Um, yeah, I, I was up in Fife, uh, up in Scotland, visiting uh, Seascape service users actually. Um, so it was it was connected, um, but I was unable to, to to join the session. But I'm I'm told it went very well. You were looking at uh, Stuart, the two Stuarts were looking at. Uh, braille connectivity with, with, with iPhones, uh, etc. So I'm, I'm told it went very well. But good, good morning, everybody. That's anybody that's just arrived. Welcome to another social hub session. Uh, we're in September now, which is um, mad. What a year it's been so far. But we've been running these sessions since the very start of lockdown. Um, you know, and they've developed. You know really successfully um we're, we're really pleased with with the the way that that they've progressed and the the uh, interest and the loyalty that some of you have shown as well to these sessions is great so we really appreciate that and we hope that you're still finding them useful good so we're at 10 2 we'll give it a minute or two before before we kick off um any any late comers but before we do that um as always um this session it will be split into two two parts. Stuart Beveridge today is leading the demonstration of, of JAWS screen reader um, and, and how you, that, that interacts with with Microsoft Edge. Uh, and then after that, the session is 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 open. It is yours to ask away any any questions related to the demonstration or any other areas of assistive technology. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's the floor is open, so please do ask ask away. Uh, if you want to uh, leave your questions, um, if you want to type them, you can use the uh, chat box which you've got there. Uh, if you're using a Windows platform, you can you can use the keystroke Alt and H to open the chat box, or Command and H on a Mac. Um, there's also a Q and A feature as well, and I always forget the keystroke. So Stuart, lower look, I'm sure you'll remind me. Uh, I, I actually think you have to tab to the Q&A yeah, uh, button to access it, Sam, yeah. Good, good. My memory wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah, there is no keystroke for the, the uh, Q&A. Uh, so anybody that's using a screen reader, you'll have to tab along until you get the Q&A um, uh, box at the bottom there, and you can leave any any questions, observations there. And you can also raise your virtual hand as well. Um, good. So please, yeah, please do. Ask, ask any questions um, and we'll get to you as soon as we can. Good stuff. Okay, well, yeah, 10.04, so we'll, uh, we'll make a quick start. So for anybody that's just joined us, welcome again to another Social Hub session. My name's Sam. I work at Sight and Sound Technology. And uh, today we've got the famous two Stuarts with us, um, the, the double acts that have been... Um, joining me and, and, and supporting us uh, throughout uh, these sessions over the last the last few months so yeah good morning to you guys thank you again for being here and uh yeah and today's session um as, as you already know is, is going to be focused to begin with on jaws the jaws screen reading software um and how that interacts um with microsoft edge which is a relatively new and improved um web browser um, so yeah, Stuart Beveridge from Seascape is going to be running that session. 
um, in just a second. Um, good. So, yeah, I've already mentioned, please use the facilities, ask away any questions, and yeah, and then we can we can get back to you and hopefully, um, yeah, we, hopefully we can, we can help you with any of your assistive tech questions or queries. Good stuff. All right, then. Well, without further ado, I'll hand over to Stuart Beveridge from Seascape to kick us off. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Sam, and uh, hello to everybody. And uh, as Sam says, um, I'm going to be mainly today discussing Microsoft Edge. It's not really going to be a, a, a JAWS um, tutorial as such, but I do want to show you briefly how um, Microsoft Edge and JAWS um, work together because, um, you know, for, for years um, I was using a different web, you know, a, a few different web browsers and now Microsoft Edge is, I use nothing else. I, you know, use Microsoft Edge every day, both at work and, um, and for my, my personal life as well. So I'll just kick off because I, I'm conscious of time and I do want to, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions after um, the, the demonstrations. So um, I'll just kick off now. Um, so as I say, um, welcome everyone to this brief, very brief, hopefully, demonstration of using Microsoft Edge with JAWS. And really the, the main purpose of this demo is to show, as I was saying there, how good Edge is as a web browser. And, you know, as I was saying again, I'm sure all of you use the internet with a screen reader on a regular basis. And you'll be glad to know all of the keystrokes you are used to will work in Microsoft Edge. And I'll give a, a few examples um, shortly, a few quick examples. I also want to briefly discuss two significant advantages of using Microsoft Edge over other web browsers such as Google Chrome. One huge advantage is the built-in PDF reader, which works beautifully. The other is what's called the immersive reader. And what that does is if you are reading a, an article on a website such as uh, BBC News or Wikipedia, you can enable what's called the immersive reader and it will declutter the, the website so you're left with just the main content of the article you want to read. So it's really useful. Um, so we have a lot to get through and I, I will demonstrate all of the features um, I've just talked about uh, very shortly. First, just let me give some background and the reasons why I now use um, Microsoft Edge and nothing else. To put this in context, many of, many of us have been using Internet Explorer for years now. I, I'm sure I'm right in saying that. And that was the browser of choice. Um, but now Microsoft have shelved Internet Explorer because basically, to keep it brief, it wasn't future proof. There were security issues and it was becoming very slow and unreliable, even when trying to use the most basic websites. Um, now, of course, you have Google Chrome as an alternative browser. It's a brilliant web browser. And as I say, it works brilliantly. However, there, in my opinion, there are a few reasons why you should seriously consider using Edge, or at the very least, I would encourage you to give it a try. First reason, and to me, a very important one, it is completely accessible and extremely usable. So, you know, that, that's a huge key point, isn't it there? Um, it is actually built on the same platform Google Chrome uses, but let me be absolutely clear at this point, it is not an identical copy of Chrome, far from it. Um, it just uses the, the, the Chromium platform as a base for what it needs to do, what it needs to achieve. Another advantage, it is super fast and I'll demonstrate its loading speed um, in a moment when I load a website. And finally, Edge is now built in to the Windows 10 operating system. So really there should be no need to be using anything else in all honesty. Um, a couple of um, points again, just before I go on to the demo, just um, 
kind of housekeeping points, but they are important points. You will need to make sure your copy of Windows 10 is running the latest version. So um, in order for Edge to work at its best. Um, so the latest Windows version is Windows uh, 2004. And just as a final suggestion before we access a website, Edge definitely works best with the most up-to-date version of JAWS, which at this time is JAWS 2020. So let's get on to the good stuff. Let's launch a website. And this is easy to achieve because as soon as you open Edge, you are taken straight to the address bar. And from here, you can just type in um, a web address, you can perform a, a web search. Um, and the web address I want to access at this point is the BBC website, which is bbc.co.uk. Um, all will become clear when I, I open the website up. So let me just type that in now. Um, and just, I'm going to have to close the, the Seascape website down. We had that as the, the background. So just, just bear with me two seconds, guys, till I, I get this, this to where I need it to be. Close document window. Jaws version 2020.2008. Windows 1. Taskbar. New tab dash Microsoft Edge. App bar toolbar. Address and search bar edit. Search or enter web address. Type in text period. CTRL plus L. So we're on the, the, the web address bar. Uh, I don't need to do anything else here. Again, as I say, I can just type in an actual web address or I could do um, an actual web search. But for quickness, let me just type in bbc.co.uk and I'll press enter to load it. BB. C, B, C, P, C, O, C, O, P, R, U, K, R, uh, Enter. B, B, C. Page has eight regions, comma, 24 headings and 116 links. And that web page has loaded. Now, you probably noticed the speed there. I think it took about maybe two, three seconds to, to load it most, um, which, again, I, I think that's really good, a really important point of, of Edge, as I said earlier. And when you're on the, the web page, the, the home page as we are now, you can use the up and down arrow keys to navigate through it. Not, not the best way to navigate a web page uh, in all honesty. You're far better to use some quick navigation keys such as H for heading, etc. cetera. Um, I'll demonstrate that in a moment, but you can also use the links list feature, which is a exclusive to JAWS, you know, it's a JAWS feature. So if I press insert F7, it will conveniently list all the links on a website. So again, I'm sure many of you have used these keystrokes before, but it's just to show that Edge is compatible with these keystrokes. So let me do insert F7. If I can find the F7 key, there we go. Jaws version 2020.2008.24 ILM, links list dialog, links list view, cookies, one of one. So the links are now listed on the, the screen. Is that coming through OK, Sam? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so now what I can do, I can, you know, just press. So I, I want to, in this case, I want to get quickly to the, the news link because I want to bring up, you know, some sort of article to demonstrate some features. So what do I, I do quickly to get to news is to, to skip through everything. I can just quickly press the letter N. N, no comma, take me to settings, 2 of 116. Well, we don't want that one. N, notifications, 7 or of that. 100. N, news, 9 of 116. So I pressed N three times and I've landed on the, the news link. And I could have kept pressing N there, you know, to go ev through everything. I could have pressed S a few times, you know, to get to sport. Um, I suppose W for weather, etc. So it's really convenient when you do the, the links list feature. Um, so I'll press enter on the, the news link to open this page up. Enter. JAWS version 2020.2008.24 ILM. JAWS version 20. Home dash BBC News. And we're at the top of the page again, and we're on the, the news headlines. And again, what I'm really looking for now is to get 
to the, the top stories um, section. And if I was to arrow down through all of this, it would take me forever and a day. Um, you know, you, you really don't want to use the arrow keys. When you, you go to a web page, you generally want to do something with it and you don't want to read through all the rubbish at the top. So um, let me just press the letter H a few times. And because the BBC website is extremely accessible, I should eventually get to the top stories section. So let's try H. Let us know you agree to cookies heading level two. Not that one. Accessibility links heading level two. Or that. News navigation heading level oh, two. We're getting there. BBC News Home heading level one. BBC News Home and it's at heading level one. So heading level one is always the most important heading I find when browsing through um, web content. So now that we're on the BBC, the, the home page of the news app and we're a uh, page and we're on the correct heading, let me just arrow down through some of the top stories and we'll try and find an interesting one. Heading level two top stories. Heading level three link concerns over PM apostrophe S mass virus testing plans. Right. Medical experts raised uh, doubts about plans to have quote millions quote of coronavirus tests processed every day period. So again, you're getting a, a kind of overview of each headline here. Um, let me just see if I can find something more that's not as depressing. List of um, two items. Four minutes of link from list end. Boris Johnson rap heading level four related content. List of link how do link what are link who and start on list end. Link live. Heading level three link global coronavirus deaths plus nine zero zero link eight oh, minutes no, of three no, eight no, minutes no. of twenty thirty list end. The crash scene heading level three link fatal stone haven train crash apostrophe caused by rocks online apostrophe. Now as I I live in Scotland. I haven't tested this this morning, but Stonehaven is up in Scotland, so that that might interest me. So I've, I've found a just by you know arrowing down through the the top stories, I found something that's of some interest to me, shall we say? So let me press enter on this link to activate. Um, this news story and expand and we can then read through some of the, the, the news article this story. Now pay close attention to what Jaws says when this new web page loads. Enter. Home dash BBC News. Heading level three link fatal Stonehaven train crash apostrophe caused by rocks online apostrophe. Report says the railed Stonehaven train hit rocks and gravel dash BBC News. Report says the railed Stonehaven train hit rocks and gravel dash BBC News. Page has nine regions comma ten headings and one hundred and eight links. Oh dear, and it hasn't done it. So th this is live uh, and it's not done what I, I wanted it to do. What I wanted it was hoping to hear was immersive reader available. It should have actually told me that the immersive reader was available. And what that should have, what this the immersive reader should have let me do is when I press the F9 key, it should um, activate this immersive reader feature and declutter this web page so that I can quickly read the main content without any difficulty and having to skip through all the, you know, the cookie notices and things at the top. Um, let me try it. Let me just try F9 and see if this Report. will do what I want it to do. F9. And it hasn't done it. It's for some reason the immersive reader is not activated in this article and I haven't I have never saw that um, on a BBC News article before. Virtual file. Um, Jaws version 2002SE. Double S. If I can news enter. Report says the rail stone table. Report head with you. Link cookie. Okay, yes, link. B visit list of same. Okay, link list of list of link site. Link cookie. Yeah. Visited link home. Enter. I'm going to go and back to the news headlines and BBC. try another headline. BBC dash home. Virtual file. Alt plus N E. Double S. News. Enter. Visited link. New enter. Banner region. BBC. Home dash deep access of news navigation that acts frequent flyers, comma, get rid of Suvies, cut British Airways apostrophe, and it's BAT health heading level three link British Airways apostrophe, and it's cut more flights. Let's try this one and see. Again, I'm just doing the, the news headlines. I'm trying to get the immersive reader active here to show you how this works. Enter. Main region, top stories region, British Airways apostrophe, and it's cut more flights heading level three link. British Airways apostrophe, and it's cut more flights dash DBC news. British Airways apostrophe, and it's cut more flights dash DBC news. Immersive reader available. Okay. There we go. Did you hear it there? Immersive reader available. So if I go back to the top of the web page just to keep myself right with control home. British Airways. And now, um, you know, Sam, you'll be seeing this that, you know, you're, you're still seeing all the, the, the jargon and the, the cookie stuff all at the top of the page. Yeah. And, you know, if, if I was to arrow down through this. Heading level two, let us know what we use. Link cookies. I, I'm just not interested in that, all of this cookie rubbish, am I? So if I press F9. F9, Emerson Reader Dash Personal Dash Microsoft, 
Edge, main, main reach and end. Immersive reader available. Page has one. And the immersive reader is now active, and hopefully what it's done is it's actually, as I am fond of saying, it's decluttered that web page. So from the top of the web page now, British Airways. if I go start arrowing down from the top, read aloud button. We'll come back to that. Text preferences button. There's text preferences. So again, I, I presume that's for magnification purposes, etc. Grammar tools button. Reading preference. Pen tool. Domain reach. Heading level one. British Airways. Apostrophe. Under to cut more flights. So just by arrowing down a few times past the, the, the buttons at the top, the accessibility buttons, you're on the main story. Figure. BA plane graphic. Image copyright. Getty images. Figure end. British Airways. Apostrophe. Under IAC is cutting more flights over the next few months as it adjusts to the continuing collapse in demand for air travel period. So I think that is really worth taking advantage of if it actually works. And if you have the, the latest JAWS 2020, um, then this should be announced when the immersive reader is available. And it's really good, as I say, on the BBC News articles or on Wikipedia. And you remember we, we went to that one there about the, the train crash and, you know, with the, the Stonehaven train crash. And because... Um, the immersive reader, it didn't say immersive reader available. So again, uh, just keep your ears tuned just to make sure that the immersive reader is available because JAWS should announce it when it's actually available for, um, you know, activating. So with the immersive reader, we've kind of demonstrated that, but there is um, another um, feature as well. Um, called Read Aloud that you can use. Now, this is a, a, a kind of a Microsoft Edge feature as well. Um, it uses a built-in voice and on any page, it doesn't have to be with the Immersive Reader Active. Um, I've tried this, you know, just where I've launched a, a home page or, or any website. If I press Control Shift U, it will actually read this article to me using a built-in Microsoft voice. And again, as I say, this is exclusive to Edge, this feature. Um, I suppose if you're a screen reader user, I don't tend to use the, the built-in voice. But again, just for convenience, it might be nice just to you know sit back in, in your chair and actually hear um, the, the voice, hear the article being read aloud or the web page being read aloud um, without pressing any buttons, you know, etc. So let me just show you with Control Shift U how this works. Control Shift U, British Airways apostrophe. British Airways owner to cut more flights. Image copyright Getty Images. British Airways owner IAG is cutting more flights over the next few months as it adjusts to the continuing collapse in demand for air travel. IAG, which also runs Aer Lingus and Iberia, said core control shift U. And I've pressed control shift U again, and that has stopped the the, the read aloud feature. And um, if I'm still the on, previous paragraph button so, unavailable. Yeah, I'm on the right part. So again, again totally exclusive to the read aloud um, part in Microsoft Edge, it has accessibility buttons at the, the top of the page as well. So as if I British Airway, read, British Airway, read previous paragraph button so available. I could do a read previous paragraph if it was available. I could just press enter on that and it would take me to the previous paragraph if I go down. Continue to read aloud button. Continue to read aloud because remember I paused it there with control shift U again. That's the, the toggle keystroke. Read next paragraph button unavailable. Read next paragraph if it was available. It's not at this stage. But you see how accessible this is. It's really good, isn't it? Voice options button. And there is a voice options button. So I, I won't go in there at the moment. I'm happy to come back to it if anybody really wants to. But you can go in there and actually change the built-in Microsoft voice. It's got quite a few different options there, both um, male and female. You know, some are, are better than others, to be honest with you. But um, again, it's really just to try and point you in the right direction to let people know that th these options are available. Um, and, you know, just you can go in there and try things out um, at, at your leisure. Um, and finally, um, before I, I kind of finish this part at least, um, let me briefly demonstrate the PDF reader and how accessible and easy this is to use. Um, so I'm going to, oh, I'm going to actually close Edge down um, in a second and I'm going to open it back up again to a, a new, you know, blank address bar. Um, and 
in the search bar this time, rather than type in a web address, uh, I'm going to type in L Braille User Guide. And this should bring up uh, just a, a basic search, you know, like you would find in Google um, search results, for example. And from these search results, I should be able to find the user guide for the L Braille, which is the greatest invention ever, by the way. Um, and it should bring up this in PDF format so we can have a quick look at it and show you how easy um, a PDF is to navigate using the built-in PDF reader in Microsoft Edge. So again, just bear with me, guys, while I close some things down here. Close document window, close home news. Windows 1, taskbar, new tab dash Microsoft Edge, app not toolbar, address and search bar edit, search. So I, I've just pressed control to make them be quiet there, but I've, as, as hopefully everybody can hear and see, I'm back on the, the title address bar. And now if I just type in L Braille user guide. E, E, comma, B, L, B, R, 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 B, L, E, so let do that again, if my spelling was e, any good. E, comma, L, B, R, A, I, L, L, E, L, L, B, U, S, E. Uh, user, user -D -E. guide, and I'll press enter. Guide, enter. Enter your search here and dash search suggestions will show you. And again, that's loaded really, really quickly. Your Braille user guide. And hopefully if I now go down uh, with H for heading for quick navigation again. Your Braille user apostrophe S guide dash freedom scientific visited heading level 2 link. And that's exactly what I was looking for. The, the freedom scientific website was the first heading um, I got to the first search result, I believe. Um, it's the L Braille user guide and it's on the freedom scientific website. And I know this works and I know it's in PDF format. So let me press enter to load this up. And again, just, just listen to how quickly this loads. Enter https colon slash slash support dot freedom scientific dot com slash content slash document. And it's just, it's, it, the speed is really, really good. Um, so I'm on the, the PDF, hopefully now, just let me confirm this with myself. Go to any page between. Yep. So we're on the PDF um, document. And now I, I'm quite, I think I'm quite right in saying that not all PDFs will be as good as this. I think PDFs are kind of down to the developer or the, the, the author, for want of a better word, you know, to make them um, quite accessible and user friendly. But Microsoft Edge has loaded that in seconds and it does a wonderful job of navigating through it. So let me just give you an example. Um, again, using quick navigation keys, I can skip through all the contents in order. So H for heading. El Braille 14 heading level two. So there's the, it's the El Braille 14 one I've clicked on. Let's press H again. Table of contents heading level two. How good's that? Table of contents, we're definitely getting there. And because it's so well laid out, I can just keep going through it with headings. Introduction heading level two. Introduction, I can down arrow. Welcome to your El Braille comma, the 20-1st century comma, take anywhere replacement for the dedicated no taker period, running Windows 10 with JAWS comma, and a full dash featured. So again, it's reading that, but I, I'm not really interested in the introduction. So say I, I wanted to get to, um, you know, what's in the box or something like that, or charging the Braille, I can just quickly navigate through it with headings again. What apostrophe is in the box question? Heading level two. Wonderful. What's in the box? And again, I, I'm interested in what's in the box, so I can just arrow down and read through um, the, the content. Bullet L Braille dock station. Bullet L Braille eco dash leather carrying case with a shoulder strap. Bullet L Braille AC adapter. Bullet L Braille manual in print and braille. Bullet SD card with system backup 4. So again, that for me, the, the immersive reader, the, the, the PDF options there, because that is, is exclusive to Edge, there really, again, should be no, no reason why people don't take advantage of this. It's a really, really sophisticated web browser and it updates um, continuously. So let me just check my time because there is something I do want to show you as well um, before I finish. Um, let me just check. Um, is it okay to show one more thing, Sam? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, I think we've got time. So yeah, let, me just, let me just close. Um, the, everything down here. Let me just close Edge down because I, I'm finished with this particular aspect of it at the moment. Close document window, taskbar. And that'll do me for now. So, <clears throat> one thing that I, I do want to make people aware of is if this, um, you know, class of, well, demo or class, whatever you want to call it, has been of, of any interest, you might want to make Edge your default web browser. And sometimes, people don't know quite how to, to make this happen. So let me just 
briefly show you, take you through the process of doing this. So from your uh, computer's main home screen, if you like, uh, press Windows and the letter I to open Windows settings. So let me do that now. Windows I settings. Search box, comma, find the setting edit, type in text, period. And you are immediately taken to a search box. Now, rather than navigating through all the, the settings, um, in the search box, you can type in default browser. So let me just type that now. D E F A U L T fold B R O W S E R. And it should be there now. If I just down arrow, I should have the default browser um, selection. Browser, choose a default web browser. Ah, choose a default web browser. Exactly what I'm looking for. And if I press enter to open up this uh, topic, if you like, this, this area of settings. Enter. Web browser, comma, Microsoft Edge button, default apps, choose default applications, web browser, comma, Microsoft Edge button. Now, it says web browser default. Now, I have it set there as Microsoft Edge, but did you hear it there? Uh, hopefully, I didn't speak over JAWS. It said Microsoft Edge button, and button is what you're interested in, because as soon as you hear the word button, Right away, you know, your, your, your alarm bell should be ringing and saying, oh, yeah, that's a button. I can actually interact with this button, activate this button, and there should be some more options behind it. So if I press the space bar to activate this button, the, the default web browser button. Space, pop dash up, choose an application, Microsoft Edge button to activate press. And there is a pop-up, as JAWS very clearly read out there. So you've got, on my... Um, computer at least, um, there are a few different options. Yours might be a bit different depending on how it's configured, but I have Microsoft Edge. If I tab, choose an application, choose an application, Firefox button to activate press space bar period. So you can pick from Firefox, Google Chrome button to activate press Google space bar period, Internet Explorer button to we activate press space bar period. definitely don't want Internet Explorer now. Microsoft Edge button and to activate. And we're back to Microsoft Edge. And on any of those, you would just press the space bar and your web browser would then be the, the default. And any any website, um, if it's Edge at least, any PDF file, etc. as soon as you load it, it will, will appear in Microsoft Edge. So that, I think, I think I'm going to stop there um, for questions, but that is a, a brief introduction to the Microsoft Edge web browser. I um, hope it's been uh, useful and informative. And, you know, thank you very much again for everyone for taking the time to, to listen to me on a Thursday morning. And I'll now pass back to Sam and see if there are any questions. Brilliant. Thank you, Stuart, as always. Um, really informative. Uh, yeah, brilliant. As always as well, um, I think it, 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 it takes one person to get the ball rolling with the questions. Um, so so don't be shy, everyone. Please do uh, come in with any 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 questions you've got or just... Um, oh, here we go. David's kicking us off. Here already. we go. <laughs> um, but actually, before that, Michael did um, mention um, in the Q&A box, he said, well, how important is it to have... Um, I believe what he's trying to say is how important is it to have the latest version of um, uh, Windows? Or, or uh, okay. at, the moment, yeah, yeah. at the moment he has 1909 after after his most recent update. So um, I might pass to, to Stuart just after I, I'll, I'll attempt to, to answer this and do my, my, my best to answer it. But um, with 1909, I don't think Edge is actually built in there by default. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so if you did want to use Microsoft Edge, you'd actually have to go through the process of downloading it and you know going through the process of installing everything. It's quite easy to do, uh, don't get me wrong. Um, but with 2004, I mean, it's built in, it's ready to go out of the box as soon as you um, you know, do the do the update to the, the latest version. Um, so that that would be, I think, even for security issues, not to frighten anybody, but I, I really think you should try and update your um, you, to the, the latest 2004 version um, if possible. Um, again, what I found now, to, to be honest with you, I don't have control of my my works laptop in terms of updates. So, so Michael, just to let you understand, I am actually still stuck on um, 1909 
on my works laptop and I'm trying to use Microsoft Edge and I'm finding some websites it's not as responsive as it is on the laptop I'm using my, my personal laptop at the moment. Um, again, um, with JAWS, I'm using, with work, I'm using 2019. Um, on the laptop I'm using now, it's 2020. And again, the, the responsiveness and the results aren't really what I expect. And it's a bit of a, a pain, to be honest, when I'm using something so good and up to date on my own laptop and on my L Braille. When I go back to the works laptop, I really do see the difference and it really does slow me down. Um, Stuart L, have I covered everything there or? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Stuart. And I suppose I would just add by saying that the uh, the latest Windows update, the uh, 2004, as they call it, uh, definitely is worth getting. Um, there's a few ways to get it if you haven't, because it is being kind of drip fed to people, I suppose, over a period of time. Um, but the other thing I'd say is the quick way to find out if you have, let's say, the um, the latest version of Edge or the, um, the Chromium version of Edge, as they call it, is within JAWS to do control um, insert and V when you have Edge open. And if it says anything around version 70, I think mine says 73 or 74, then you're absolutely up to date. But if you're on version 41 or 42, that's the old Edge, which had minimal um, usability for, for screen yeah. reading technology built in. So you, you would absolutely, as Stuart says, you'd want to update it. It is uh, generally now packaged with the 2004 update. So Getting the 2004 update is the easiest way to do that. And you can force check for updates and you can also download what's called the uh, Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, which is a piece of software that will take you through that update step by step if the Windows Update service doesn't do it for you. It's also worth saying that some machines, some vendors have blocked the 2004 update because their hardware is not ready. And uh, um, very, um, I suppose, strangely, um, um, Microsoft was one of them who blocked it for their own Surface tablets for but the very update wow. they released uh, was blocked for the Surface tablets only up until last week. So I only have had the 2004 update on uh, my work machine since last week. So if you can get it, it's going to give you the newest edge as well. Yeah, and maybe even if, if you are struggling with the update, I, I really would encourage people to, to get it if at all possible. If, if you have JAWS or, you know, you purchased a laptop from, from Sight & Sound, they're really helpful. I, I was struggling with it with my um, L Braille and uh, I, I contacted James at Sight & Sound and he actually sent a, a link over um, you know, so I could just, I could download it straight away. So, you know, don't be stuck is my uh, um, recommendation there. And just while I'm, I'm on it, Sam, if you don't mind, let me just show you the, how to get, as Stuart said, I'd be as well demonstrating this while I've got the tools in front of me. Um, let me just show you how to, to know if you've got the latest, ver the correct version of Microsoft Edge. Windows 1. New tab dash Microsoft. Um, now, Stuart say, as Stuart says, you can Alert do. Explain. News be quiet. <laughs> as Stuart says, you can press Insert Control V when you're on the, the Microsoft Edge site, um, or I believe you can also do. I think I use Insert Q. Let me just see if Insert Q works here. Microsoft Edge with Chromium settings are loaded. The application currently being used is Edge.x. MSEDGE period. EXE. So what you're looking for there is, you know, as long as you're hearing Chromium settings are loaded, I think I'm right in saying this as well, Stuart, then again, you know that, that that's what you really want to hear, that Chromium settings are loaded. So you know that it's on the, the correct platform there. If I do insert Control V, let's see if it gives um, anything else. Microsoft Edge version 85.0.564.51. There we go. So you've, yeah. that's, that's the two ways of doing it, either insert Q and to hear if Chromium settings are loaded or insert Control V and you'll get the, the web version there. And Stuart, can I just mention one more thing, because it, it is, I think, uh, slightly relevant, is this Windows 2004 update. If people aren't sure, if you're not sure, was it ever installed on my machine, you can find out very quickly what version of Windows you're running by pressing the Windows key and OR for the run option and type the word WinVer. Um, altogether, W I N V E R, and you will hear the version of Windows that you're running. Alt F4, Windows comma, document or internet resource comma, and Windows will open it for you, period. Open colon edit comma. Win and it, so I mean, as soon as you do Windows R, you're in the, the, the run dialog box and you're immediately in the search box. So again, if I just type all lowercase, W I N V. -E 
E R uh, Enter. Window Enter About Windows Dialog. Microsoft Windows Version 2004. Left Parent OS Build 19041.450. Right Parent Copyright 2020. So that's kind of what you should be be looking out for there. Alt F4. Right. Well, thanks. Thank you both. Hope that's answered your question, Michael, um, and anybody else. Um, lots of questions coming in now, which is great. Um, firstly, we've got David. Uh, David asks, can you transfer your favourites and bookmarks across to Edge quite easily? Um, yes, I think you can. I think that's in the... Am I right in saying that that's in the install process, um, Stuart, there? I'm sure there's a way to do it. Yeah, there is. So the first time you run Edge, um, you can do it uh, exactly as you say in the install process. It, and it, it's very good. It looks at, at your system. It looks at the other browsers that are there. So in my case, it actually pulled stuff over from Chrome and even Internet Explorer, but I still had some favorites. Uh, so it brings them over, but you can do it later as well in the settings. There's a whole ream of settings in Edge and it's laid out very similar to how Chrome is laid out. And that's probably the great thing about Edge that if you've been using Chrome, you're switching to Edge, there's, there's virtually no difference. I know the purists and the, the, the serious techies will tell you that there are, but there's very little from a user standpoint that you're going to notice, which is great. Perfect. I can't actually remember, I do apologize, I can't remember the command to get to the settings on Microsoft Edge because I'm never in there. <laughs> Um, so, so it's under the, the menu, just in the edge menu, yeah. um, you'll, there's, a, there's like about 10 options in the menu, including bookmarks and history and settings is there. There may even be a shortcut for it that I'm not sure of either, to be honest. I can't remember, yeah. <laughs> but that's the way to do it, yeah. yeah. So. Good, good. So within the sort of in, install process, you may have yeah, to do Yeah, or it. in the settings. In the yeah. settings, yeah. you can do it if you, you forget. Just press the alt key and you'll get into the, the menu and just arrow down to settings, yeah. Right. Thank you. Not that. So. And actually, the, just to say that the settings is a, one of those kind of smart things. So you can search for things. So, for example, if you wanted to see, I don't know, your profile or you wanted to, uh, you know, see the list of saved passwords, you can search for passwords and it'll jump you to that section because obviously the settings is, is mammoth in Edge. There's lots of stuff there. So yeah. if you do searches, it's going to help you uh, just to kind of narrow down what, what you're looking for. And it is quite, it's a very, very accessible dialogue, but it never used to be, but it is a lot more improved now. So you can't even go through it by, you know, H for heading, you know, for each section as well. So um, loads of options to, to have a play with there. Good stuff. Thank you. Uh, Chris and Joe have both thanked you for a, a, a very good uh, demonstration. Edward uh, Bates, another, another regular, has said, thanks for the interesting... Uh, that was interesting, Stuart, and he's also said it's important to remember that Edge uh, didn't used to be um, as accessible, um, if if he remembers rightly, but it's certainly got a lot better now with the latest version of, of JAWS, etc., and Windows. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really important. And just, by the way, on that point, I think it's, uh, it's a really good point, um, Edward, and just one thing I remember from, I'm just talking to people who weren't screen reader users, just sighted users on the, on the original version of Edge. They hated it. I don't think anyone mm. liked it, even visually. Yeah. Um, the, the whole experience of using it was clunky. Um, I don't think Microsoft particularly liked it. And they realized very quickly that they were losing traction in the web browser market very, very fast. So they made a good call to kind of base it on, on, on Chrome, definitely. Yeah, definitely. No, it's good. It's a, yeah, that's an important observation. I think they've done a lot of work on it, haven't they? So, uh, so that's good news for all involved. Um, Peter's asked, um, uh, great demo, first of all, and he's also asked, can you? Uh, so, con to confirm, um, there is now no real reason to use Adobe Reader with Edge and yours. Is that right? So, uh, do you mean for PDFs? I think might I, be what. I, um... You be I think I think yeah. uh, for me that that's PDFs that I, Peter's meaning that I won't pass over to Stuart just to uh, to be you know absolutely clear because I'm no expert on on anything really. But uh, I mean I used to use Adobe PDF Reader um, up until I, I I moved over to Edge and. I never really liked Adobe PDF Reader. It's it's a really good it's a really good option. Um, 
you know, you, you had Adobe PDF, you, you sometimes even had, you know, back in the day, um, you know, ABBYY, Fine Reader, which would, you know, convert PDFs, but I, I just don't use any of them, as now that I've, I can load them in seconds using Edge, and because Edge is so, so good at actually, you know, decluttering the PDFs and making them readable, um, personally, I don't find much reason to, to use Adobe PDF at all, but maybe Stuart has a, a different viewpoint? Well, it's really interesting because Stuart B, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed your session this morning because I've learned I never used Edge to read PDFs until today. Ah. Um, so you have give, you've showed me the light. <laughs> so yeah. is there a need to use a different PDF reader anymore? Probably not, is the answer. I would say but probably not. No. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over today and if there's any problems, I'm going to ring Stuart on speed dial and have my Any time, any time, matey. <laughs> <laughs> We're all learning, even, even Stuart L. Absolutely, yeah. That's a first. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always learning. An oracle. Um, <laughs> um, no, it's great. It's true, though. It's, um, yeah, that is a really useful tool, isn't it? Not to have to swap between programs, um, which is great. Um, Claire B has asked, um, is there a shortcut to alter the speed? Um, uh, Da, 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 uh, when an item is read out in Edge, or is that done through JAWS? I assume it is done through. Um, I think she's talking about the speed of, of the immersive reader, I presume. Is it the, or is it the read aloud? Um, well, let's answer both. I mean, let's assume, let's, let's answer both. So if it is a, the immersive reader, how do you adjust the speed? So if it's the immersive reader, that would be more of a, a, a JAWS um, you know, command because all the immersive reader is doing, remember, is it's just it's decluttering the web page. So your screen reader is still key there. Um, the, the, the way I use, I usually do it, there's two options to slow the speed down in for all applications. Um, let me just make sure I've got this right. It's Control Alt Windows page down. Let me just try this. Slower. Slower. So again, that's going slower. If I do Control Alt Windows page up, Faster, faster, faster. It goes faster, and that will work through all applications. That's the one I tend to use. If you just want to use it specifically for um, an application you're in, such as Microsoft Word, and not as default, you can do, I believe it's Control-Alt page down. Let me just test this again. Slower. So again, Control-Alt page down or Control-Alt page up will just render it the speed for that specific application. And as soon as you go out of that application, your default speed will take over again. Um, within the, the read aloud um, function, there is in the, the voices section, I believe, there are um, buttons to slow the speed down and increase the speed as well as, you know, changing the voice, um, you know, options to different, you know, male or female, etc. So um, everything is covered um, if you have a, you want to have a wee look in the, uh, the read aloud options when you invoke it by pressing Control shift u Great, great, good stuff. Thank you. Um, Chris Brady has been waiting patiently. He's got his hand raised. So I'll, um, I will say, I see, um, if I didn't, I'm not sure if I did, but if anybody does want to um, ask a question, they want to voice it, if you want to raise your hand, you can use the keystroke Alt and Y uh, on a Windows platform or Command and Y on a Mac. Um, and then I'll unmute you and you can ask away. So I'll, I'll unmute Chris if you still want to ask your question. Sorry, Chris, I've allowed you to speak and now you need to unmute yourself. There you go. Uh, good morning, people. Hi, Chris. Good Chris. morning. Good morning. Um, thanks very much for the uh, uh, demonstration. That was very, very good. Um, when you're in the P PDF reader, can you actually select text and copy it to the clipboard and, and put it elsewhere, can you? Um, do you know, I actually don't know. I haven't tried it. Do you want me just to quickly... Um, can do. Bring yeah, it up give it, again. Um, let me just... Give it a one. Give it a one. Give it a Microsoft Edge. Bear with me, guys. C-R-L-B-A-I-L-E-L-U-S-E-R. User. Q-R-D-E. Guide. Enter. Your real user. It'll really use a guide, it'll really use a apostrophe, this guide dash freedom scientific enter. It'll really use a guide dash freedom. So I'm just very, very quickly navigating through this to, to try and um, do this for you, Chris. Go to any page, it'll really table entrance, what apostrophe is in the box What's in the box? Let me see, so shift down arrow. Selected, bullet, it'll really dot station. Ah, 
You can't. Selected. Bulletel Braille Eco Dash Leather Carry Selected. Bulletel Braille Eco Dash Selected. Bulletel Braille Manual. And then let me just copy that with Control C. Copy selection to clipboard. There's your answer, Chris. You can indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, um, there is a lot of information in some of these PDFs that uh, you might not want all of it, but you want certain pieces of it so that you can put it in something so you can make notes for yourself so that you can probably print those notes out or braille those notes out and, and have yeah. a, uh, you know, a, a reminder of things when you're away from the computer. Yeah, the really good question. Um, let me just, to be absolutely thorough here, Chris, I've copied that to the clipboard. So let me just see if I'm able to paste that into like, you know, like a Word document for you just to be, you know, absolutely thorough and make sure that this definitely does what I'm saying it does. Alt F4, taskbar, Windows 3, opening dash, Microsoft Word document, document one, paste it from clipboard. Bullet it has. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that is working absolutely wonderfully. Alt F4. Document, save and type, menu, leaving I mean, menus, it's, save options, it, button, it's useful, active, save button. Don't especially when you're doing research of mm -hmm. any kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's going to be, be really re, uh, useful for you there, um, Chris, by the sound of it, isn't it? Right, well, thanks very much, anyway, for that. No problem, pleasure. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Perfect. Uh, very good. Um, we've got lots more questions to get through before we finish. Um, uh, da, 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 let me just have a quick look. We've got uh, Amy. Amy, hello, Amy. Um, another another regular attendee. Um, Amy's asked, can you use Edge with JAWS 18? Um, as she um, she hasn't been able to update to 20 yet. Um, and does Edge work better with Audible software? Um, that other I'm just trying to decipher this. That other browsers uh, don't have. Um, if, if, if I'm, uh, could you maybe elaborate on that a little bit, Amy? But first of all, can you use it with JAWS 18? My, I would have misgivings about it, but I haven't tried it. it Stuart, do, do you know? I, I would have, I would prefer people using JAWS 2020 in all honesty, because I, I still find even JAWS 2019, um, for me, as I said on my own, my work's laptop doesn't um, always do what I want it to do. But Stuart, I don't know if. You can clarify. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, one part of me is thinking that it's a Chromium-based browser. In theory, you should get something, but I, I, would, I would sort of agree that it's, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's three years old now. Um, so you're not gonna get the optimal performance. If you have JAWS 18, Amy, I'd probably suggest that you use Chrome. Um, yeah. Might work a little better for you if you're not able to get the upgrade at the moment. Yeah, and of course, I mean, you won't get the, the immersive reader um, no. or the, the built-in PDF there. You know, I, I kind of harp on about these things today, but that, that really is why I use Edge now and nothing else. So, yeah, but I mean, Chrome, by the way, I mean, you know, j just to, to say, you know, don't, if you're using Chrome, don't, don't go away from Chrome because Chrome is still a brilliant um, web browser, you know, it, it's, but it's, it's good to have the choice, isn't it? So. Definitely. Yeah, Chrome is great. There's nothing wrong with yeah. it at all. And again, with all these tools, if they serve you well, then then stick with them. I suppose yeah. the only thing I, I would say that it, not against is Internet Explorer. So if, if Internet Explorer, if you think it's serving you well, I think it's still time to, to do something else. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were talking just before the session, actually, about Google Chrome and, you know, the comparisons between the two. Um, you know, I was having a play around with Chrome the other day, and there, there is an interesting feature with Chrome called the dark setting, where you can invert the colors and um, you can enhance the colors um, of your web browser in order to you know for anybody that's that's in the session today that has low vision um that, that doesn't need a full screen reader like yours but perhaps um still has some usable vision um that that feature of chrome might work for you um you know it might might help to enhance the the screen there so yeah so edge is fantastic but but like like the, the two stewards have said um or, you know Whatever works for you, Chrome, Chrome may maybe the maybe the solution. Um, good, 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 good. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps, Amy. Um, Chris has 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 helped me uh, uh, decide for that a little. Um, he said, I think Amy may may mean the aud um, audible, the talking book reader. Um, does does Edge work better with uh, it, 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 in conjunction with that? Um, 
Does that make sense? Um, in terms of um, navigating the, the, the Audubon website, I, I mean, I, I, I on Audubon practically every day looking for, for books yeah. and I have found no problem um, whatsoever. Um, the downside, if, if, if what I found um, is with the actual Audubon app, you know, if you download the Audubon app for Windows from the, the Microsoft Store, um, onto your computer. I found that to be, I'm afraid, absolutely inaccessible, but that is no fault of Microsoft Edge. That's actually the fault of, you know, the, the Audible app and the developer themselves. It's nothing to do with Edge. Um, I've always found the Audible website really, really accessible with Edge. Yeah, I'd agree. And Audible, of course, are going through a bit of a change at the moment in how you can download content from uh, from a, um, a browser such as Edge or Chrome. And as Stuart mentioned, there's this uh, Audible Windows 10 app, which is very challenging. Um, there's also an app called Audible Sync that they've brought out, which is meant to be something you can use to transfer books onto um, onto a portable MP3 player. So Audible's in a bit of flux at the moment in terms of getting content from the website. If you can use Audible through um, a mobile app, you're going to have a far better experience in terms of actually listening to content. Brand. Thanks, guys. Um, hope that's, yeah, that's Amy. Um, we'll go back to the uh, to the uh, voiced questions now will uh cassia or cassia would like uh, to speak you just want to unmute yourself there i think it's cassia if you'd still like to ask your question if not we'll we'll move on uh, hi oh there you go, uh, there uh, we go. Hi, sorry about that. thank you very much it's a great session thanks a lot all right um, I have a question. I, I never knew how to access um, backups on Internet, Internet Explorer. Um, I know how I could do it via NVDA. How could I access a list of buttons on Microsoft Edge of the JAWS 2020? Because I know um, it's linked to Mr. Instead of Seven and headings and buttons. Did you? Did you pick that up, Stuart? Sorry, that's your your connections breaking yeah. up a wee bit, Cassie. I, I, I think. I think it's a list just, of buttons. Is that right? A, a list of um, buttons. You could probably um, use just. I usually just do the, the quick navigation key B. I just keep pressing the letter B. Okay. Um, just like with H for headings. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's great. That helps. Thank you very much. Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Great. Nice. Short and sweet. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Cassia. All right. Okay. Um, Patsy would like also like to speak. Um, I'll. You want to unmute yourself, Patsy? If you're still with us. Yes, I'm still here. So. Hello. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Nice, nice to hear you. Yes, good session. Very good. Now, I'm not actually a Braille or Polaris user. It's just low vision is the issue with me. But I had used Edge in the early days when it first came out and turned away from it. But from what I'm hearing from this session and a previous session you, you did, um, it seems that the features are a lot better now. A couple of questions, though. I use Adobe now for PDF and some um, forms and so also ask for Adobe when you're trying to download them to use them. Would Edge and their PDF reader do the same thing as the Adobe? Hmm. Um, I don't, I mean, personally, I've, I've never had any problems with it. Um, Patsy, um, if what I use, what happened with me is when I I went into a, a new PDF, um, it actually what it ended up doing is that there used to be like a um, a kind of dialogue box 
opened up, um, you know, when I, I installed Edge um, because, you know, there was, I had Adobe, but I also now had Edge and whether or not it actually recognised when I tried to open the PDF, oh, right, he has two options here. He can either now use Adobe or it can use Microsoft Edge. And what I was able to do was tab through the dialog box and actually press the space bar on a checkbox to say, um, I can't remember off the top of my head the exact dialog, but it said, um, may always make Edge your default you know, PDF reader. Um, it wasn't that exactly, but it was a similar thing. And as soon as I checked that box, any PDF I now open uh, will actually appear in edge oh, okay. so you, you oh, might want to try that with a new pdf patsy yeah. until you get on but come back to me if you have any issues okay all right it's just that i don't want to cancel adobe if edge doesn't allow you to do that with forms that specifically ask for very wise yeah adobe just to be on the safe side yeah. yeah okay lovely thanks Stuart. it's been good to hear you this morning good Brilliant. Session. thanks patsy cheers thanks, thanks a lot okay. Very good, very good. Um, yeah, lots and lots of interesting questions coming in, which is which is brilliant. Thanks, everybody. Um, Stuart has asked, Stuart Deadman, um, he's finding that he gets stuck, uh, JAWS gets stuck in the menus regularly in Edge. Is there a magic keystroke to jump back to the body of the web page? Um, if it's this your, is, in the this menus, is definitely it's escape key. Uh, I, feel, I feel Stuart's pain because uh, this does happen sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I've used a mix of escape, as uh, Stuart B has mentioned, and F6 sometimes can be good. But sometimes you do have to, to tab uh, through all the, because at the top you have the favorites bar and you have, the, um, you have a few other um, bookmark links. Um, also turning, o turning off and on the virtual cursor might help as well, which is insert and Z or insert an escape, which does a screen refresh. So, so maybe um, a combination of those things may help get you going again, Stuart. Yeah, my, my, I wondered whether sometimes, I, I did notice that, I haven't noticed it recently, um, but I, I was, I think you'll agree, Stuart, sometimes I was actually having to do the insert escape quite a bit to keep, you yeah. know, refresh the web page. Yeah. Um, so maybe try the insert escape um, might, so yeah, I usually I used to find if I just did that once, then things were for some reason a, a lot faster. But um, I haven't noticed that recently. I'm happy to see. So yeah, grand. Thank you both. Um, what else have we got? Oh, good. Yeah. So Chris, um, sorry, Jan has asked, do you have to create an account to use Edge, or can you just start it and use it? Um, I didn't have to create an account to begin with. I, I just actually started, um, you know, using it um, from scratch. But you can, that there is a way um, to sign in. And the advantage, I think Stuart was saying this actually before we came um, on air, the, the advantage of signing in, if you really wanted to when using Edge, is that it actually saves your web browsing. So say I, I was on the BBC website um, just now, I could then you know, go to something like my iPhone if I had the Microsoft Edge app and it would actually save um, you know, where I was on that website so I could continue looking at it um, on my iPhone. So really, really convenient and that's maybe the, the one advantage off the, the top of my head at any rate I can see of actually signing in, but I don't think it's necessary by default. No, it's certainly not. But yeah, I'd, uh, I'd agree with Stuart. The advantage of signing in obviously is for your um, history to sync, your browsing history and your favorites. So if you have a Microsoft um, ID, whether it's maybe a, um, a Hotmail or an Outlook account, or maybe it's a, um, you know, maybe you're in college and you have a, a Microsoft account or um, an Office 365 account, <clears throat> you can sign in with any of those. And uh, it's a really, it's really good. I if, if you do it, you just have to do it once when you're, when you're getting going. Um, it, it might be something of interest to people. Good stuff. Great. Thank you both. Um, Chris um, Albert has actually asked a, uh, 
a non-edge related question, um, which is, is welcomed. Um, Chris has asked once, uh, da, 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 a, a question Ari uh, uh, hit, Hitchy, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, smart TV accessibility options. How are you both with uh, smart TV accessibility, the two students? Any, any, any good? I'm out. Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty out as well. I'm, I'm very involved in this area. It's not something I have a lot of experience with. Uh, obviously, it's more about I kind of plug services into my TV that are accessible, yeah. yes, uh, like yeah. Apple and Netflix. But no, I, I'm, I'm afraid. Well, but it, it is something certainly within Sight and Sound that we're interested in as well. So you'd never yeah, know. Watch definitely. this space. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, the, we, may, we may be able to help here, Chris. Um, he struggles to make... Um, highlighter changes for choosing options in menus, uh, very poor contrast. I've been into all accessibility options. Also, um, can I connect a Bluetooth keyboard as an alternative, which is, uh, yeah, a wireless keyboard, essentially. Um, now, the answer to that is yes. You should uh, be able to, yep. You, in theory, should be able to connect a Bluetooth device, whether it's a, you know, a Bluetooth keyboard or... Um, or, or a headset, um, uh, that sort of thing. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, this sounds like something that we might have to do some digging on uh, with the accessibility options. Yeah, do, do, you, do you know what the problem, not the problem, Sam, but that there are so many different manufacturers out there and every one of them have their own software in the TVs. So, yeah. you know, to, to try it and, and answer that, that, that question, and it, sometimes it feels as though it's like, a, a, I get that, asked this a lot through, you know, that the people I work with um, at Seascape, and it's like a needle in a haystack at times because there's so many different builds, versions of TVs, etc. Um, the one I, I use at the moment is a Samsung, and that really has um, good accessibility features in there. You know, the, the Samsung is, is my recommendation, but, they, you know, you can go to something like a, a Sony or, you know, other types yeah. of, you know, a Panasonic, and you just get a totally different experience. But um, the, the, the Bluetooth keyboard should be fine, not in the accessibility section, but just in a, the overall settings. Um, Chris, on any smart TV, I would imagine there should be a Bluetooth section there somewhere to pair your keyboard. Definitely. Yeah, uh, and you know, it is a challenge, as Stuart says, that there's so many companies, everybody has their different um, accessibility features sort of built in in a different way. Um, so it's definitely a, a, a big area. And if anything, it's, it's probably getting bigger because people really want to explore the world of smart TV and, you know, connected devices and all this. So, um, Yes, yeah, so sorry, sorry, I can't be of more of more help in this one. Well, that's actually you've 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 sown a seed actually there, Chris, because this may be a useful um, topic for a, for for a, a future social hub session. Is smart TV accessibility? Um, we've had a lot of questions previously about Sky Q and and the the improvements they've made to their accessibility features, and um, I actually have Sky Q, um, so that might be a that might be worth exploring. Um, but regarding the, the specific brand that you mentioned, um, I'll look into that um, and see what we can find. I know you've said there that the menu is white and the highlighter is yellow. Um, so you'll, yeah, you'll be looking at trying to customize that, I, I assume. So yeah, I'll look into that for you. Um, but yeah, apologies, we can't be more helpful. Um, Good. And then to finish with, it looks like um, Amy's just sort of um, she's, she's expanded a little bit on on her previous question. Um, she said, thank you for your answer. What she meant was when using the Audible manager to transfer and download books, um, she's struggling to use Internet Explorer. And she has to use Box instead, which isn't great. Will Edge be much easier to use? And what? Oh, and also, what is the Audible Sync that you mentioned earlier? Okay, so there are there there are a couple of things parts to this question. First of all, yeah. Audible Manager is no longer supported for new titles that you buy. So Audible made some changes at the in the middle of August to the format of their audiobooks. There used to be there's different format levels: format three, format four, and format five. And format five is the highest quality. Audible Manager, unfortunately, does not support for, uh, Format 5. And Audible 
stopped support for any lower format of any new titles from the middle of August. So you cannot use Audible Manager anymore unless it's, unless it's for titles you have purchased in the past that are on format four. So there was a lot of uh, controversy about this. A lot of, I suppose, um, blind people were quite concerned and Audible responded by creating an application called Audible Sync, which is designed to transfer books between your computer and a device. Now, when I say a device, I believe it's compatible with uh, devices, specialist portable players that play, that play the Audible format. So the one that springs to mind straight away is the Victor Reader Stream, probably the Plex Talk, and I think some of the Lodestone, uh, not loads, um, uh, Milestone, sorry, um, MP3 players, but you need to just double check that I'm not exactly sure which is supported. <clears throat> so you, the idea is to eventually get away from Audible Download Manager, uh, which used to link into iTunes and did all sorts of great things. And it was actually a great little program because I used it a long time for a long time as well. Um, but that's not going to be the future. If you're using a portable player, you would need to use uh, Audible Sync and um, it's not something I have personal experience of, Amy, but if you do need some help with Audible Sync, um, give me a shout or give us a shout into Sight and Sound because I will have a look at it for you. Oh, brilliant. Thank you for that, Stuart. Um, yeah, I hope that, that helps, Amy. Um, very good. Um, yeah, that looks like um, a, a sort of a natural conclusion um thanks everyone for all your questions that was uh yeah brilliant lots of interesting things discussed there um amy's also mentioned that a sky q session would be helpful and uh possibly a session about accessible dvd players um yeah all of these topics and and subjects are uh yeah potential options for uh, future sessions so we'll definitely add those to the list Grand. So um, all we need to do now is thank, well, firstly, Stuart Beveridge for your brilliant demonstration this morning. It sounds like you've, you've um, yeah, light bulbs have gone off left, right and centre, which is really, really useful. So thanks a lot, Stuart. Um, thank you, Stuart Lawler, as well, for your input, as always. Um, it's really, really good to have you uh, with us. Um, good. And then lastly, thanks to everybody that's been here. Uh, a really, really you know, well attended session again. Um, I think we had up to 40 people, which was, which is great. And because we're aware that, you know, now that lockdown is, is sort of, you know, restrictions are, well, they're yo-yoing, aren't they? But we know that people are back to work and now back at school and whatnot. So it's, we really appreciate, you know, and we're happy that there's still the demand for these sessions, which is, which is great, great news. Um, good. So I'll, uh, I'll hand over to the two stewards if you want to sign off. Yeah, just uh, as I say, just take oh, Sam. Thank you um, again to, to everybody for, for attending and uh, listening to me this morning. And uh, really good session. Hope it's hope it's been useful and uh, we'll be back again soon. Yeah, and for me, thanks a million. And I have to say, I'm going off now to set my PDF reader to be Microsoft Edge. So thank you, Stuart B, for that tip. Hey. <laughs> You're getting an angry phone call later, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, both of you. Um, great. Lots of thanks coming in in the chat box as well, David, Thomas, Peter and Liz. Yes, thank you. This session has been recorded. So if any colleagues, friends, family, you know, uh, need to have a look at it, it will be on our YouTube channel um, this afternoon at, at some point. Um, so just visit site, uh, YouTube slash Sight and Sound Tech, I think it is. And you'll find uh, you'll find this this video um, great. And we'll be back in two weeks' time uh, for another social hub session on the twenty fourth. I'll be sending out lots of information about that um, shortly, so stay close to your, your inbox for that. Um, but yeah, so that's us done. Thanks again, guys. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks' time. All right, thank you.